Today we're going to be taking apart and fixing the Samsung Galaxy S6. I'm going to go ahead and unplug my braided cable from the phone, take out the SIM card with my SIM card removal tool, and then grab a heat gun. You can also use your sister's hair dryer, and you want to heat up the back of the glass so that it's too hot to touch. You want the heat to seep through to the glue underneath the glass. It'll take about two or three minutes. Just kind of gently heat up the whole phone all the way around. I would recommend watching this entire video all the way through. I will drop tips and hints the entire video. Also, if you feel like you learned anything during the video or if you enjoyed watching this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It does help me out a lot. I'm taking my razor blade and slipping it between the metal frame and the back glass of the phone. You can see right here, I accidentally dug my razor into the white color of the glass. Once I realized that the razor can scrape away the color, I never repeated that mistake again. I slid my razor with the edge not touching the back glass or the inside mid frame of the phone because there are components that you can damage on the inside as well, which you'll see. If the going starts getting tougher, Make sure you warm up the glass again so that the uh, adhesive will fall apart a little bit easier. You can see I'm just taking my razor blade and sliding it around the edge of the phone. That's where the majority of the adhesive is on that back panel. Just cutting it away from that mid frame. Going to finish off the last little bit of the adhesive here with my razor blade. And that separates the back glass from the phone itself. These are pretty cheap. I'm going to go ahead and link those in the video description as soon as they become available. You can see the adhesive that is stuck to the back. The majority of them will come with adhesive pre-installed. Here are the screws that you need to remove from the mid-frame of the phone in order to get at the screen. It's just a small Phillips head screwdriver. The tools will be listed down in the video description below. Go ahead and check that out if you need any replacement tools. I'm going to heat up the screen of the phone, mostly focusing around the edge because that's where the adhesive is holding it onto the frame. And I'm going to push from the back side of the frame on the battery so that the screen will pop out from the phone. You can see the adhesive along the top here as well as I try to separate it. It's really important that you do not press around on the wireless charging pad. You can see that here. I lifted that up before I started pressing on it. What's interesting with the wireless charging pad, you can see the connection points on the main board that charge the battery wirelessly. I just disconnected the battery along with the fingerprint scanner and home button here. And then here is the LCD ribbon cable connector. They're like little Legos. You just want to unsnap them from the main board. Here's the front camera that popped off. Once again, replacement parts will be linked in the video description below. Here is the earpiece, and that releases the motherboard from the midframe. I'm going to release the 4G and Bluetooth wire cables. They're just little snaps. And then the charging port unsnaps from the back of the motherboard. Here's the motherboard itself. Nothing else is really replaceable on the motherboard except for the rear-facing camera here. It's kind of glued onto the motherboard, which was interesting. They haven't done that in the past. Here's the camera. I'm going to go ahead and snap that back into place. It has the same little ribbon cable connector with the Lego piece. It also is interesting. It has a little circle pin on the front that helps guide it into place. I thought that was interesting. I haven't seen that before. Here's the battery. Battery is a little bit interesting as well. You when you're taking out the battery, you want to use something thin to slide underneath the battery and cut away the glue. If you use a round pry tool, it'll put too much pressure on the screen and it'll crack between the screen and the battery. So make sure you're not prying the battery up, you're slicing the battery out with a thin card. You can use like a face card as well, like a poker card. Coming in from that other side as well, making sure I'm only slicing and not prying. You're going to want to take that advice for the rest of this phone as well because the screen is so ridiculously thin. I'll show you that a little bit later on in the video once we get that separated. Battery is almost off. Remember, replacement batteries can also be found in the video description below. There you go. There is one screw holding on the charging port to the mid-frame. Remove that Phillips head screw and you would think the charging port would come off, but the capacitive buttons are wrapped around the mid-frame and underneath the glass. So we have to wait until we remove the glass and LCD from that panel in order to separate the charging port. Taking out the earpiece, set that off to the side, and then here is the vibrating motor. Eventually I want to take one of these guys apart and see what's on the inside. I'll save that for a future video if you guys are interested. Now I'm going to heat up the glass. This heat job is going to be a little bit more important because we're heating up the entire screen of the phone. What I'm going to do now is slide the little card that I've been using between the LCD 
and the plastic. Now there is a black shield on the back of the LCD that we're going to try to not separate from the LCD, especially if we're going to reuse the screen again. So I'm going to slide the thin card between the screen once again. If the going gets tough, warm up the phone again. I like to keep it so that it's just barely too hot to touch. And remember, don't flex the screen at all. You'll be super surprised at how easy it breaks. You can see that I'm taking my card and sliding it just between the plastic and the black shield. You want to leave that black shield intact and attached to the LCD. It's not too big of a deal if you accidentally separate it a little bit. It's just easier if you keep it intact. Also, I'm being very careful with the LCD ribbon cable down there at the bottom of the screen, making sure not to kink that at all. If you bend that or kink it too much, it will stop working and your LCD will just be black or gray when you try to reinstall it on your motherboard. Being gentle with that LCD cable, pulling it off to the side, heating the phone up one more time, making sure to get down there by the capacitive menu buttons and back buttons, and then using kind of a slicing, sawing motion to get rid of the adhesive attached to the LCD and that black frame. Now that I'm down towards the bottom of the phone, you want to be super careful with those capacitive buttons, especially if you're going to reuse your charging port. I'm sliding my card between the button and the glass, making sure not to cut the button as I press it down and slide off the glass frame. Once the glass is off, and here is where you really want to make sure not to hurt the LCD, you can see how thin it is. It's kind of like doing brain surgery on a Dorito chip. Here is the charging port capacitive buttons. I'm going to pull those off the back side, and that releases the charging port from the phone. If you need any replacement parts, I'm going to list those in the video description. So go ahead and check that out if you need to replace your charging port or your menu button, like this little guy right here. Just kind of feed that back through the mid-frame. Remember how it goes. It goes through that main little hole right there. I'll show you as I reinstall it right now. We're going to go ahead and put the phone back together again. Press that home button into place. Then you can get that charging port. It'll guide on top of those two little screw holes right next to the charging port itself. Wrap the capacitive buttons around the back and kind of stick them into place. They have little circles on them with guiding pins, so you make sure they're in the right spot. There's a little metal grill that's on your old screen that you want to transfer over to your new screen. And then your new screen should have its own adhesive, but if it does not, just get some double-sided tape and put the that tape where the adhesive used to be on your old screen. Slide the LCD ribbon cable through the plastic frame and then line up all four corners. And then you want to get that home button lined up perfectly. I messed up a little bit here, so I'm going to unsnap it, get that home button perfect, and then snap it back down again. The home button will be your main guiding point with that bottom side of the screen. Get the one little Phillips head screw back into the charging port right next to that headphone jack. Press everything down into place. Earpiece is now sliding in, getting that little tiny circuit board at the top in the little groove. And that vibrating motor back into its little circle. Here's the battery again. Make sure there's nothing underneath the battery when you put it down, like that little 4G wire. Press it down into place, and then snap the motherboard onto the charging port connection that's on the back of the motherboard right there. It's like a little Lego. You'll feel it connect. It'll be pretty solid. Get that home button and LCD with the earpiece all snapped in, and the front-facing camera. Snap that boy back into the motherboard. And then the last one I do is the battery, just to make sure there's no power going through the board as I'm working on it. Getting the Bluetooth wire press into place along with the 4G cable. I'm also going to press the wires down into little grooves that are right next to the board, just to make sure that uh, when I put the back frame on, it's not going to pinch the cable in any weird way and disconnect it, so I won't have service anymore. Here I'm lining up the charging port with the back frame, sliding that screen into place, and then clipping it all around that frame as well. It's not going to fit perfectly just yet because we don't have the screws holding it down into that back frame, but we can test it now that the power button is lined up with the little contact pads on the motherboard. Everything appears to be working, so we're going to go ahead and screw all these screws back in. Once again, your back panel should come with its own adhesive, but if it does not, grab some double-sided tape and then lay that down, peel up the back of the tape, and then you can set your back into place. But, you know, normally they'll come with their own adhesive, and they're pretty cheap. I will link those in the video description as well. 
pinch the phone shut and you should be good to go. No one would be able to tell that the phone was even opened. Worked out pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and test the phone really quick, make sure everything's working. Plug in my braided cable. It looks like it's charging. It's got the fast charger connected and we should be good to go. I am going to do a durability test with this phone. I will link that here. So if you're curious to see how durable this phone is, go ahead and click that link. I will have that up as soon as it's done. Once again, it does help me out a lot if you subscribe to my videos. Don't forget to like if this helped you. Hope to see you around. Thanks for watching.